What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna take a look at this new futuristic looking machine. Y'all know me, I love the future. Um, this is the Gevi 2-in-1 coffee brewer and uh, coffee grinder and brewer, all right? So we're gonna take a look at that today. So the layout of this video will go as follows. I'm first gonna look at the device as, as it is, right? We're gonna look at what it claims to do um, and we're gonna look at just the different specs of it and see if they're accurate. Next, I'm gonna look at things that I like and then I'm gonna end on things that I don't like. Um, yeah, and to give you an idea of whether or not you're wanting to buy this, by the time I'm releasing this video, there's still some time left on their Indiegogo, so I want to be able to help inform you on whether or not you're wanting to purchase this or not. All right, so let's begin. Let's just look at this, uh, let's look at this bad boy. So, I know it looks kind of crazy. You have just one stalk right here. You have this almost like EK-43 or Titus Nautilus looking grinder over to the side. And then you have this tiny little area where you have the, the pour over essentially going on. Uh, back here, this little tiny column is where all the water is held. And then right here, we have a scale. So really, it's like a three-in-one the three in one situation. Grinder, brewer, and a scale integrated right here. Now, what this machine claims to do is to grind coffee with extraordinary precision, to brew coffee with extraordinary precision and control, and to be able to rival manual brew pour overs where you have the ability to change mid pour. Now, in the grinder itself, there are 60 millimeter flat burrs that are vertically mounted, which allows for less retention. And they claim to be able to have less than two tenths of a gram retention. And then over here, we have a brewer where you're able to completely uh, uh, manually change and decide what's going on with the spouts. We have three spouts underneath that go in a rotation. All right, so three spouts like this, and I'll show you here in a second. Actually, right now, we'll just cut to B-roll of it. All right, so as you see in this little footage, you have three spouts going around in circles. Now, with this, you're able to program the flow rate of the water being dispensed. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean the speed at which that water is exiting the machine. You have the capability of manipulating that from three milliliters per second, meaning in one second, there's three milliliters of water being dispensed up to in full steps, up to nine milliliters per second. So you can make a, you can make every pour a different flow. You can make your first pour three milliliters a second, second pour five milliliters a second, twelfth pour nine milliliters a second. Whatever you're wanting to do, you have that capability. You can also control the temperature of the water up to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 96 degrees Celsius. Sorry for the lag there, I had to remember. Um, so, you have this robust grinder. Oh, and then the scale, I forgot to, uh, to mention. The scale measures in increments of half a gram, and it rounds down, all right? So, some people may not like that, but we're, we're not gonna cover that right now. So, you have, in this, you have in this machine something that's pretty light. You can almost pick it up with one hand. It's a very minimalistic footprint, especially when you take into consideration that it has a grinder and a brewer all built into the same thing. Along with the machine, you get this, which is their Gevi Brewer, looks similar to a Chemex, and you get a mesh filter, as well as some filters that resemble the Hario V60 filters. You get this with the machine as well. Of course, as you see, there's nothing connected. So you're able to take this out, use your own decanter, use your own pour over device. You can use whatever you like under this as long as it fits underneath. And we'll get into some of the Frankenstein type things that I've been enjoying uh, on this piece of equipment. Now, um, inside you have a thousand watt burner so that the water heats up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and yeah, you have metal components inside here. So it's really well built. And um, yeah, so that, that's about, that's enough of the specs. Let's continue on into the things that I like and to the things that I don't like and look at some examples of these. So first and foremost, something that um, I've been enjoying doing is brewing coffees with different vessels. So let me grab some for you. All right, so I've been brewing with multiple vessels on this, including one of my favorite brewers, the Kono, obviously the V60. I've been playing with the AeroPress as a no bypass type brewer. And of course, I've been playing with the Tricolet, which is also a no bypass brewer. All right, so I've been using all of these underneath it. And as you can see, these different things fit underneath. So you're able to use whatever brewer you want as long as it fits, right? So um, 
So what are the advantages of some of these? Well, of course, we can get into the nuances of different pour over devices, but in short, I use a Kono so that I can get that conical type of pro cup profile with its complexity and nuanced acidity, etc. I use the triclet and the AeroPress for kind of like those no bypass types of brews, and I play with the V60 to really kind of contrast with the Kono. You may be asking, well, that's all good and well. 60 millimeter flat burr grinder sounds good, and the ability to change the flow rate sounds good, but does it actually deliver what it's promising? Well, so this is where I'm going to get into these positives. With this, I have taken my Akaya Lunar Scale, which hooks up with Bluetooth to my nifty phone, where I have the Smart Espresso Profiler app. Now, of course, even though Espresso is in the moniker, you don't have to use it for Espresso. Essentially, I hook it up and use it via Bluetooth capability in order to track flow rate of whatever is hitting the scale. So I wanted to test if this machine was actually giving me three milliliters a second, four milliliters a second, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I made a few profiles, brewed a few cups to see if there was consistency. And I'm happy to say that this was actually dead on with each of those numbers. When it said three, it was hitting three. When it said four, it was hitting four. Now granted, that's using this app, so of course there could be flaws in the app, but the fact that both this and the app are reading the same exact milliliter per second, I feel pretty confident it's doing what it says. So my first big pro, is that I'm able to have something other than my hand that is very different uh, as far as flow rate. I can try as hard as I want, and with the years of pouring, I can try to do three milliliters a second, but I'm gonna do four at some points, so I'm gonna go down to two at some points, and it's gonna, be, it's gonna be inconsistent. This, however, is exactly what you tell it to do. So for tests that I've been running from brewer to brewer, like comparing and contrasting these, comparing and contrasting no bypass type brewers, I'm able to negate that inconsistency of pouring, which has been incredible. I'm able to truly change flow rate and see how that's changing the brew. So of course, three milliliters per second is going to penetrate at a different depth than nine milliliters per second. You have trickling at three and you have it really kind of forcing the water out at nine, right? So one of the first pros is it's actually doing what it says with that flow. Next, we're looking at the grinder. Now I've been playing a lot with the grinder since I've gotten this from uh, the coarsest grind setting to the finest. Now it's my belief there's no such thing as a grinder that truly can at the top of its game hit all grind sizes. I think every grind size, every burr set, every uh, grinder has like a specific range of brews that it specializes in. Even the infamous EK43, they get, th there's two options of burrs. You have the Turkish burr set and then you have the normal burr set. The normal burr set, as is shown in some articles I'll link below by uh, God's Honest Truth down in Australia, they show that the regular burr set kind of shines from four to, uh, I think, 14 on the dial, whereas the Turkish burr set, you know, is, is shining from one to four, right? So there's no, even with these grinders that have 98 millimeter burrs, there's nothing that's really a catch-all for all grind sizes, at least not yet. So with this, the answer of whether this can do espresso all the way up, the answer is yes. Now, whether it's optimized for both, I would say no. It only has 10, it's over, on this whole dial, it has 51 steps. So literally 51 clicks. And the first 10 clicks, they label as espresso. The next 10, AeroPress. The next 10, pour coffee, which I take as like pour over. The next 10, filter drip. And then the final is French press. Now, in my brews, I found that I actually prefer my pour overs um, in the AeroPress range. And then as it keeps getting coarser, honestly, it's it's... Too, it's too coarse for my liking, but I know that a lot of people like coarser grind settings than I do. Now, the espresso, you can do espresso on this. And just for reference, I didn't want to complicate this video with an espresso machine. But for reference, when I was on the three, click number three, and of course, 10 steps isn't many clicks. So you're not getting, a, you know, an espresso grinder with this. You're getting a grinder that can do espresso. But on click three in my decent espresso machine, I pulled a shot with the classic nine bar curve and it took 40 seconds to give me a 35 gram output and anything under that was choking so badly it took way too long so uh, around eight is where i was grinding most of my beans to hit just a classic nine bar shot so it has the capability of doing uh, of doing espresso grind settings and then i have my friend brian kwan i'll link his youtube below he's been playing on his instagram with 
with doing uh, turbo shots using this grinder, and it does turbo shots phenomenally well in his opinion. So I've not played with that yet, but it can do those things. I have found that the particle distribution that I'm really loving on it is in between a a espresso and like that coarser French press. It does an incredible job with the pour overs that I've been enjoying. There have been no muddy beds, even down to, the, to that low part of the AeroPress range, or actually, uh, yeah, AeroPress range, I'm sorry. Um, there have been no, no muddy beds, even doing 1 to 20 ratios with something like my Tricklet. So that's really impressive. The cups have been extremely clear and have been really sweet. All right, so obviously this, again, this is the pro section, so I'm not just singing this machine's praises. I have some cons coming up. Um, the scale is a nice feature, especially for people who are using this to, uh, to replace everything and to make a smaller footprint, right? You don't need to have a, a scale and a grinder and a brewer. You have all three in one, right? So the scale is a nice feature and it comes with a lid on it that can be converted into your vessel to weigh your coffee beans out. When you put it on top, it is, uh, it's kind of a safe proof type thing where it won't hurt and decalibrate your scale. And then on the touch screen itself, you have the capability of using the grinder alone or you have the capability of using the water spouts as a kettle alone to heat up water alone, to empty your water alone. Uh, you, so you have the ability to use each of these independently or all in sync. So there are three modes on here. As you can see, there are three modes, grind pro, pour coffee, and kettle mode. Just a brief look at it, as you see, when I click Grind Pro, we have Free, which is just grinding any coffee for whatever you want. We have Cups, which is, when we click on it, we want to do one, two, three, four cups for people who want to fill their, uh, their hopper up and don't want to be more precise. And you have Timed Grinding. You can fill your hopper up and do it based off of time. Of course, I think the target audience of this is probably not going to use that cups and time setting because in my mind, people who are going to get this intense about their coffee are likely being very intense about their ratios, but that I'm digressing. Then the, the next, uh, we're going to skip over here to kettle mode. You click on that and you have the option to boil your water and you can use this boiled water for uh, your flare espresso machine. If you have a lever machine at home, like the robot, Cafe Lot robot, you can use this for to fill your kettle up and then you have boiling water in there. Uh, you can also click this button of empty water, which allows you to just empty what's left in the tank. Then we go back and then the middle button is pour coffee. And this is where you're uh, doing the whole bit. You're, you have the ability to go through, create a recipe that incorporates the grinder and the scale that will log what grind size you're on. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on um, my recipes and new recipe. And we see here, you can choose beans or powder. So click beans, then we have, we're going to use the built-in scale or other scales. And essentially, we are just clicking through, choosing our grams that we're using, confirming the grams, and we are um, uh, putting on there what grind setting that we used. And then as we keep going, um, it, it goes to uh, the next part, which is how much water for each step you're wanting to dispense. And then it's also asking you what flow rate you want and how much time between pours, okay? So the time, uh, and we'll get into the cons here in a second, but the time is measured at the end of your pour. So keep that in mind. Okay, so you have, as you can see, this is a very intense machine. It has everything bundled up with an incredible amount of control and consistency, okay? now. We're gonna go ahead and move into the cons and then we'll brew a couple. Now, things that I have noticed on this that have not been ideal is the fact that the, the scale itself, it, t it has quite a bit of a delay. When I put coffee beans on it, it delays a lot. You can put on there 20 grams and it'll take four seconds or so to read what it's actually at. And it'll fluctuate even once it's there. So there's quite a bit of a lag. You have to be really slow and meticulous putting your beans on there. Now. As I continue with these cons, let me uh, make you uh, aware, I have put, pushed all these back to the Gabby team and hopefully they'll be making some changes for scale sensitivity and the different things I'm going to bring up. Uh, next up, another pet peeve is this machine only goes to that 96 Celsius or 205 degrees Fahrenheit. I wish, since it does have the capability of boiling water, I wish it would just let you use boiling water for the process, but it doesn't. So uh, from time to time as I brew, the amount that comes out isn't what I program, but I will admit that has been anomalous thus far. Most of the time, what I program is what is coming out step to step. If I say I want 60 milliliters out, within two grams, plus or minus two grams, 60 milliliters is coming out. But there have been times where it was shy about 10. Granted, those were anomalous times. Uh, for the most part, it has been quite consistent. But 
Uh, because you're able to just dump water in here without measuring your water, most drip brewers, you have to measure your water if you're wanting to be perfect with your ratios because it, uh, most brewers are just brewing all of the water that's in the tank. There's nothing measuring what's coming out. This actually measures the milliliters coming out. So you can just fill this up max every time and you could choose to use just 200 milliliters of water, which is incredible. And this brewer is not a big batch brewer. It's a single or double person brewer, if that makes sense. Most people are drinking you know, 10 to 12 ounces at a time. So it's, it can create a max of about two 10 ounce cups. So keep that in mind. That is about the max this machine can do. For me, that's great because the most I ever make ever is about 18 ounces for my wife and I. Uh, but for some people, just know that is the max you're gonna get out of it is 20 ounces. I've, already, I've told you about how the flow rate coming out is very accurate to what it says it's doing and the grinder does a great job. But let's go ahead and showcase this with a brew. I'm gonna fill up. We're gonna see how long it takes that 1000 watt heater to heat up the water and we're going to uh, brew some coffee on here. To start, uh, we might as well just brew, um, I guess we'll brew, we'll brew the tricklet so that you can see inside how it's brewing and how uh, the water is coming out, all right? And for this, I'm going to program the brew to just three milliliters a second because I want, the, I want there to be lessened agitation since this is no bypass. There's no water going around it, all right? So we're gonna get that set up and I'll show you how it grinds and I'll show you how it brews. All right, so let's set this up. I've got my coffee and then we're gonna start the grind, the, the pour over. So I'm clicking pour coffee. I'm gonna go to my recipes and I'm going to a saved recipe. I've already created a profile for the tricklet. So I'm clicking tricklet. And so I'm using built-in scale. So it tells me to flip the lid and to tear it out. So I flip the lid just like that. Now I'm clicking tear. There we go. And then here we go. I'm gonna do 10 grams of coffee or actually 12, I'm sorry, that's my, my recipe. And it reminds you what it is on here. So that delay in the scale really messed me up. I went over to 15, so I'm now having to negate. Let's keep going down. We're at 13 grams. We're at 12 and a half. And by the way, I have cross-referenced this scale with my Akaya scales, and it is always within that half gram. So that is advertised uh, accurately. All right, so I'm replacing this. Now, after we have the 12 grams, it will say confirm. So you wanna confirm it, boom. And then it tells you, rotate the dial to set to, and then it tells you what you've set your recipe to. That way, if you have, like for me, I set recipes up and my wife uses them and she likes to not have to think about what she's doing. This just tells her each step. So it tells me what grind setting to use, which I'm on 15, which I'm already there because this is what I've been brewing a lot. I'm gonna take my beans, I'm gonna put them in like so, replace the hopper lid, and I'm gonna cover the scale once more. Then all I gotta do, is place my uh, uh, whatever brewer is underneath it. Of course, the Gebby, which is made for this, can fit perfectly. This is a little too tall for the bottom of the grinder, but here we go. I'm gonna place it underneath and then watch. Start. All right. So we're gonna finish this up and there it is. Now, here's another uh, issue that I found with this is there's not much retention, but only if you do this. You ready? See that? See that? You gotta give it a few taps to get all that out. But I'm assuming, this is still really new, I'm assuming the more I season it, the less that'll be an issue. And another thing is if you use the Ross Droplet technique, you'll probably have less of that as well and less static, which is holding those grounds up there. And that's just uh, spritzing a little bit of water on your beans before you grind. But the grind particle distribution is actually quite impressive. And good grief, this coffee smells so good. All right, so now because how fine I ground it, I'm gonna grab, I'm actually gonna do something that's a little, uh, a little over the top, but I've found more consistency with it. I'm gonna take a 0.22 needle uh, WDT and I am distributing my bed thusly. I have found that shaking beds level in these brewers is really difficult. And so I've just found I prefer to manually level the bed using one of these. And because the needles are so thin, I've not yet pierced a filter. All right, so I've got my bed nice and level. 
I'm going to put it on top of my decanter. We're going to place it underneath the brewer itself. Now what I like to do with this brewer, because I love when things fit, I've found that this brewer fits perfectly around the dispersion screen itself. And I like that because this allows for more heat to be trapped and for a lessened distance to allow um, less agitation on the bed. But I'm digressing there. So we're going to get that going and you're going to be able to see how this is dispensing. So the, up here it's telling me start to make coffee. So I click it and now it's heating up. And so we're going to see just how long this takes to heat up. So let me just, I'm going to start a timer on the Akaya. All right. So I'm going to talk while this is heating up. All right, so this is quite fine, fine grounds. In fact, you could probably create coffee with this um, course of ground setting on something like the Flare Pro 2. Um, so at 15, you could probably do espresso on certain, uh, on certain smaller baskets um, and get crema and have good parameter shots. So this is grinding around that like 20 to 25 range on the niche, for instance. Um, it's, quite, it's quite fine. So. This grinder has the capability, as I said, to go from espresso all the way up to French press. It's quite an impressive grinder that can replace a lot of the grinders I know that people have at home. So if you're skeptical on the grinder itself, I'm, I'm going ahead and giving it a stamp of approval for that fine filter grind setting. I've not done too much with the coarser grind settings, but it's because I rarely ever grind super coarse, uh, unless I'm doing it for big drip coffees. Now, this, um, in comparison to say the Ratio or the Breville Precision Plus or uh, the um, uh, Mocha Master, all of those do an incredible job making drip coffee, but you have to create like four, blah, 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 blah. you have to create like 40, 50, 60 gram brews to really heighten your experience. This, however, can do much smaller brews. It can do single pours and can do it really well. So I've found a lot of joy and a lot of tasty cups doing it this way. So just so y'all know, we're now at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, you know, uh, I don't know, this is off the top of my head, but maybe 60 Celsius. Um, but anyway, so it's heating up quickly. We're at a minute and a half. Uh, it should get to full temp, I'd say by three minutes. Um, anyway, so uh, another con, as you'll see once this is pouring, is the revolutions are set. So how those three spouts are turning is a set RPM. You can't change it. And that is a pet peeve of mine that I have sent into them asking if that can be changed or if we can just speed it up. And here's the issue. If I'm doing a small brew with one of my smaller brewers and I want a 30 gram bloom, for instance, it's so slow that even at the slowest flow rate, I'm incapable of fully saturating that bed with the spouts. It only goes about a half turn with 30 grams at three milliliters per second. And that's a little frustrating because then I still have to come in and swirl it. For a uh, 50 and above gram bloom, it'll do the full rotation at three milliliters per second. But any faster than that and any less than a 50 gram, 60 gram bloom, you're not getting that full, uh, full rotation of the spouts, which is gonna have an unevenly agitated bed. We're now at about two, uh, 196 Fahrenheit. We're at about 94 Celsius. So we're almost there and it's two minutes and 42 seconds. We're at 201, we're at 203, and then it's about to finally hit our uh, ideal brew temp of 205 Fahrenheit or 96 Celsius. And that took, all right, it's at 205. It's about to start. And that took just shy of three minutes. And there it goes. So as you see, we have the three streams of water coming out, going in a circle. Now watch closely. If you can see, I'm not sure you'll be able to see through this as the steam is taking up space. But it did not make a full revolution. So I'm gonna have to come in and swirl to ensure that I have full saturation. And that was with a 40 gram bloom, okay? Actually a 35 gram bloom, I'm sorry. I did a 35 gram bloom for that first one. So it did not make that full revolution. It's going too slow on the, on the rotation of the head. So that is a downside. I'm hoping they will change that before full production. And it should also be noted, this is a pre-production unit. So this color and everything is not what it is gonna be finalized as. But that is a peeve of mine. Another peeve is the fact that it's three spouts. I'm not sure that I love it's three spouts every time uh, or the diameter itself. Uh, I wish there was a little bit more control there, maybe being able to turn off one of the spouts or even just having two spouts. I'm not sure 
I'm a huge fan of three. I'm still deciding, but the issue is with smaller doses on say a V6001 or a, a Kona when you're doing 10, 12, 15 gram doses, that third outermost spout can hit the wall on certain uh, pulses, which can allow bypass. And it can also be difficult to get a perfect centered, perfectly centered maybe Kalita 155 or a, a, the, using the fellow filters and the stag. It's gonna be difficult to truly ensure that you're not having one of the, that outermost spout going through the ruffles of that paper filter causing bypass. So with th those are issues that I've run into. Um, and, and so getting it perfectly centered is kind of a headache. Um, if there was maybe you know, an X in the center to tell you exactly where to center your brewer, that might be helpful. But as of now, those are some pet peeves that I've been running into. Now, the temperature as it's coming out, is accurate. I have done some temperature testing and it comes out right around half a degree plus or minus what it's saying it's doing. Um, and then as you see, we'll get back to this. I have it at three milliliters a second, which is the slowest it can do. And as you see, it's not disturbing the bed at all. And it wasn't early on in the pour, which is what I'm wanting. I want that option to have such a slow flow that it's not going to disrupt my bed. All right, so as you see, this bed is still completely intact, and so the water is just able to slowly go through it without having any, um, without having any of the agitation which can clog my filter. These tend to be really long brews of around six to 10 minutes, so I want to ensure that it's not causing so much agitation that it is uh, uh, forcing the fines to clog my filter. Instead, I want it to just be a slow push through and through a level bed. What I do like to do at around this point is I like to take out my little prop underneath, bring it down a bit, and I do like to give it one little swirl. Now these swirls are less aggressive, obviously, than the bare kettle agitation or the spout agitation, so that just helps me get one last leveling effect in there to negate any type of channels. All right, so as we're sitting here waiting on this brew to finish, I'm gonna conclude with some final thoughts on this and kind of wrap up my uh, whether or not I recommend you getting this. So. This has an incredible capability of tracking your flow. It shows a graph on top of how much uh, water has been dispensed and at what flow rate. So you can track and, and compare and contrast different brews that you've done using that graph. Um, it's incredible in that you can uh, you know, change your flow rate. Um, and it's crazy that it has a 60 millimeter vertically mounted burr set in here. That's an expensive thing typically to be able to purchase. And right now on that uh, Indiegogo campaign, it is, it is at a $500 early bird US dollar price price. Now, if in its current state, I think that's more than justified. I'm going to be honest with you. Granted, I have no idea about the longevity. I have never used a Gabby product before. I have no clue if this will last the test of time. What I do know is most of what it claims it does, it can do. For $500 to get, to get a brewer that's this optimizable and this uh, manual is pretty insane. And it also has a barista mode where you can manually watch what you're doing and change different things throughout the brew. I didn't do that today because I think most people won't be using that. Uh, using that because most people will be Pour, doing a pour over if they want that much control. But <clears throat> this uh, has all those capabilities and they do back, they are backed up with the fact that it does do that. I'm hoping again that they um, will make some changes before the final product. I hope that they change the dish rotation speed because I would prefer not to have to swirl every time I brew to ensure the full saturation of that bloom. I would prefer for there to be a little bit more maybe of an intuitive interface. It can be kind of difficult. There's not, um, there's not, too many options to like correct things you've done at certain points. So if you hit a wrong button, you're gonna have to go back and restart, which can be frustrating. Um, again, I want the, the, the scale sensitivity to be a little bit more sensitive so that it, you don't have to take so long weighing out your beans. Um, other than all of that, I, I think that this is well worth the uh, early price and I highly recommend if you watch this video in time to hop on that if you've been looking for something this customizable. To be honest, it is definitely the best brewer, the best home brewer I've used, but it's because how particular I am, okay? So I wanna keep that caveat in there that I am very particular. If you've seen my videos, I'm particular with all of my brews. I like to have this type of control. It's fun for me, and I think it produces much better cups. I've done <clears throat> extraction readings of a lot of my brews of just normal V60, Chemex, et cetera, brews, and all of them fall within the gold cup standard of 18 to 22% extraction yield, and that's without me having to swirl. So it is giving you those nice high extractions without having to do much and without having to overload the basket like you do on typical home brewers, which you have to do typically a 40, 50, 60 gram brew, uh, brew in order to get those optimized cups, okay? So 
All in all, I do think this is a great product. I, again, I am wary about longevity because this is the first of, that, of its kind. Who knows? Uh, and, and I'm hoping that they make those changes. In full disclosure, <clears throat> I was sent this for free from the team at Gevi. They and I want to be fully. I want to fully disclose everything right now because I am very intense on the authenticity of my word. Um, they asked if in uh, if in exchange I would do a video, and I told them no. I said, I won't. I said, I'll post about it on Instagram, but I will not commit to doing a video because I find that committing is, uh, you know, can taint my word a little bit. And I said, it's fine if you don't want to send me one because of that. They came back and said, we'd like to send you one anyway. So I took it in, checked it out, and I've been really enjoying it and decided it was worth making a video about. Granted, again, I want to reiterate, I have no prior, uh, um, I have no prior experience with Gevi, so I cannot speak to the longevity of this or its build quality outside of what I see and what I felt. And it seems to me to have a nice high uh, build quality, especially with the metal parts in the grinder. I think that's a really good thing. You see a lot of plastic parts nowadays, and it built as a whole, it feels solid. So beyond that. I just want you. I just want to be completely uh, transparent about it. I also am going to link below a video by my friend Michael Fabian, who has a who did a review on this about a week or two ago. You can check his out as well. But I wanted to disclose I did receive this for free, but I am not allowing that to influence my decisions. If you follow my Instagram, you know I receive free things frequently and frequently don't give great reviews. I'm going to finish by pouring a cup of this brew that I just finished, an Ethiopia Worka that I've been loving this year. Absolutely delicious. So much stone fruit, so much sweetness, so much brown sugar, and incredibly clear. Flavor is incredibly clear. And that was at a 1 to 20 ratio, okay, with that no bypass brewer. This thing, I, I think, for me, has been a game changer already. I've used it daily since I've gotten it. I've brewed many cups a day, and I've been brewing decaf in the evenings because how easy and good it's been. And again, I've been using it for a lot of testing because how reliable the group head is as far as the, the flow rate of the water coming out. But again, keep in mind all of the cons that I brought up. Um, we'll see if Gevi takes into consideration some of the things that I've recommended. If they do, I really think this is something to hop onto uh, uh, quickly. Um, and if they don't, it's kind of a toss up. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, I'm very excited to continue using this. Follow me on Instagram. I have been doing more and more testing on there with this, with AeroPress brews, with uh, V60 and, and everything else. I've been doing lots of testing. So follow me there if you want to see more on this brewer. Um, leave comments below. What do you think about this? Do you think this is the future of home brewing? Do you think this is indicative of, of new trends to come in home brewing devices? I'd love to hear your thoughts below. And also, I would love it if you would subscribe. Just hit it right here. Take a moment to do that. Like the video and leave some comments. Do whatever. I also have a Patreon that I've linked in the caption below. I'd love if you would take a look at that. Uh, the support allows me to get more equipment uh, that I'm buying with my own money so that I don't even have to make the disclosure that I had to in this video. I want to ensure that my word is authentic, and so that would allow me to do so the more patrons I get. And I'm also going to be giving away a lot of these video, uh, a lot of these equipment that I, or all the equipment that I purchase with my Patreon funds. Thank you so, so much. Um, again, hope you enjoyed the video. That is it for today, and cheers.